So do you have missing teeth or know someone that has missing teeth? Well, a lot of people don't want to go around with these teeth missing for most of their life. Well, in today's episode, we're going to talk about the four ways that your dentist and orthodontist can close the spaces created by missing teeth. So let's go. What is up, my YouTube family? How are you all doing? Dr. Greg here back with another episode of Braces Explained. I hope you guys have all been doing awesome and are staying safe. Once again, thank you to everyone that was on our live stream this last Wednesday. I think we had a really awesome time. We answered a lot of questions. And for those of you that don't know, we have started doing live streams on this channel every Wednesday morning at 8.30 Pacific time. So wherever that is in the world, just go ahead and calculate that every Wednesday morning, okay? So today's the first part of a two-part series. I wanna talk about today, how your orthodontist and dentist can treat missing teeth. And in next week's episode, we're going to talk about the causes and side effects of missing teeth. So you want to be sure not to miss that. As always, I'm going to go ahead and put the timestamps out in this corner so you can jump wherever you want in the video. But before you do, wait up, before you go and jump ahead in the video, be sure to go down there and hit the thumbs up and subscribe button if you haven't already. Okay, so let's get started with the four ways that your orthodontist or dentist can close the space or treat the space created by missing teeth. The first three of the four ways are treated by your general dentist, and I'm gonna go from the most conservative to the least conservative. And then the last one we're gonna talk about is how to orthodontically treat the space created by missing teeth. Like I said, in next week's video, we're gonna talk about the side effects as well as some of the reasons why teeth are extracted in the first place. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Please leave all questions that you guys have from today's video in the comments section below, because I'm gonna be doing another live session this upcoming Wednesday, answering the questions from today's video. Okay, so let's get started with the most conservative way of treating a missing tooth. The most cutting edge and advanced way and conservative way of treating the space created by a missing tooth is by using Using something that's called a dental implant okay so what a dental implant does is that it's a piece of titanium that's screwed into the bone and this titanium is actually really loved by the body so your body takes it on as its own and this actually serves as somewhat of like a root to a crown right so basically if you have a tooth extracted and an implant is placed in that site the implant actually fuses with the bone and becomes one with the bone and a lot of people think that the implant is the whole tooth you know everything that is included in the implant but it's not the implant is actually the part that goes into the bone but what goes on top of it can either be a crown if it's one tooth or a bridge if it's two or more teeth so there's a lot of different ways that your dentist can use implants to restore teeth but the concept is, is that it's putting something in the bone that can support an individual tooth or a series of teeth. The beauty of dental implants though is that they have really great long-term stability, meaning that they could stay in the bone for a long time and they have a pretty low failure rate. They do sometimes fail though, and that could be caused by you know systemic factors like diabetes or a poor oral hygiene, but they have a generally pretty good long-term prognosis. And the other great thing about implants is that you don't have to drill any other teeth to make room for them. They're pretty much a standalone entity, which is great. The next most conservative way that your dentist can treat the space caused by a missing tooth is by something called a removable partial denture or an RPD. What this is, is that it's a basically a metal framework that has a certain number of teeth, either one or several that are replaced and you could take them in or out. So this is great for maintaining hygiene, but a lot of people don't like these because they could flop around a little bit. They're not as comfortable. With implants, you don't even know they're there. They stay in there and it's basically like a tooth. But with these partial dentures, they're taken in and they can be taken out. And sometimes there's little pieces of metal that still show. So they're not the most aesthetic option for treating missing teeth. And they're also not the most comfortable, but they are pretty conservative because there's minimal amount of tooth preparation that goes into it. So you might still have to drill a couple of teeth to make it so that these clasps can stay on the teeth and hold the partial denture in place but it's nothing like our next option, which is a little bit more aggressive way of treating missing teeth. Which brings us to the third way that your dentist can treat missing teeth, and that's by using something called a fixed partial denture. The previous thing was a removable one, which means that you could take it in and out, but a fixed partial denture is also known as a bridge. Now, the way a bridge works is that, let's say you have one or maybe two teeth that are missing. Your dentist can actually do crown preparations on the adjacent teeth that are still present and basically make it so that they're ready for crowns. Now, instead of being an individual crown that sits just on one tooth, it sits on two teeth and it basically is like a bridge. It puts a fake tooth in the middle. So you will have two roots that are supporting three teeth on top of them. Does that make sense? Now, a fixed partial denture is pretty aesthetic and it's probably the most aesthetic option after an implant, but it's kind of hard to maintain good hygiene because you have to floss under that area because you don't want bacteria to get built up down there. Also, it puts a lot more fatigue on those existing roots because let's say you have a root that's meant to support one tooth, right? Now you're gonna be doing three teeth or four teeth being supported by two teeth. So as you can imagine, if this is used to treat just one missing tooth, 
it's not so bad, but imagine some people that are missing two or three teeth. Now you have a long span that's being supported on just a couple of teeth. So the long-term prognosis for these bridges aren't amazing, but it still is a very, very viable option on treating missing teeth. But before implants, we really didn't have any other options. We either had a fixed partial denture or a removable partial denture. But like I said, implants are the most favorable way for missing one or more teeth. So let's talk about orthodontics because you know, this is the bread and butter of this channel and it's what I do every single day. Orthodontics can be used for treating missing teeth, but it can only be used in certain cases. So let's say you're just missing one tooth in one quadrant, right? I wouldn't say that orthodontics is the best way of treating that because if you can imagine, if we just have one tooth missing, so let's say like the upper left premolar, right? If we just have one tooth missing and we close the space, now your upper teeth are all going to be shifted to the left, right? Because yes, we're going to bring some of the back teeth forward, but as a side effect, the upper right teeth are going to be shifted to the left, right? So it's kind of like everything will move to that side. And you might say, well, okay, then we'll just take a tooth out on the other side. But if we take a tooth out on the other side, now we're going to be pulling the teeth into an underbite. So it's not as simple as just closing the space with orthodontics. Now, I don't want you to go and say that this isn't possible. It's very case dependent. Let's say you're missing one tooth and a lot of the space has been closed naturally just over time. Well then yes, orthodontics can be used to close up minor spaces, but it's not the most ideal option, especially if it's for one or more teeth in just like one quadrant. In fact, the best time orthodontics can be used for missing teeth is if teeth actually tip in towards each other and there's no room to put in an implant. In those cases, your orthodontist might actually open up space so that your midlines are on, your bite is on, and in that case, you can get something like an implant, a fixed partial or a removable partial denture to replace that spot. I wouldn't really recommend the removable partial denture. I feel like they're becoming more and more antiquated as implants are becoming more and more popular, but you know what I mean. So although orthodontics can be used to close space, I generally don't recommend it as, you know, one of the best ways of closing the space caused by a missing tooth. And if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to stick around for next week's. I really think it's gonna be a great two-part series, you know, the treatment and then the causes and side effects of missing teeth. So if you guys are excited about that, let me know in the comments of today's video so that I know to make that video because if a lot of you aren't interested, I'm not gonna make it because I wanna make stuff that you guys find valuable. That's the, the whole point of this channel. So let me know in the comments. And those are pretty much the main ways that you could definitively treat the space of a missing tooth. There are other ways, like we could build in missing teeth in retainers or do things like Maryland bridges, but they're not long-term plans. Those things can last for a little while, but they're not great for the long term. And that's pretty much all I have about how to treat missing teeth. If you found today's video useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. As always, be sure to stay healthy, happy, and safe. And I will catch you guys Wednesday morning for a live or next Saturday for another episode of Races Explained. But for now, Dr. Greg out.